Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent bringing you episode 2 of Let's Try Grim Tides. A CRPG made by Monomyth. Um, I think, yep, we can just continue. And today we're actually heading into our first dungeon or area of importance to explore. Um, we know what to do in the... J okay, we have to check the main quest. Wait, we did already. We're looking for those five sages basically and the first thing we have to do is venture into the mystic grove locate a sizable amount of iron bark enough to commission a small ship and neutralize all potential threats to our mission along the way so that's our mission we're good here we have zero gold we have nothing but mystic grove to move forward a primordial forest on the southern tip of little nook brimming with strange flora and fauna Sage's research into the area mentions a few interesting species of bugs, notable for their color, colorful carapaces and aether-absorbing abilities. As for more intelligent life forms, if they can be called such, there are goblins and the mysterious fae. Former are of little academic interest to the Sun Court, and the latter have proven too elusive to study so far. Enemy types, we have... Human types, Ogroid types, Beasts, and Arcane. Enter dungeon level 1. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay, so here we are. Okay. We read that already? I think, right? No. Plucked from your old life in prison, you were given a new identity and a singular purpose. For the public, you are to pose as just another adventurer who's come to the Isle seeking fame and fortune, and found employment with the Imperial Governor of Farhaven. The demand for daring fools ready to explore the beautiful and dangerous southern frontier is as constant as the Empire itself. In reality, you are an agent on a deadly mission of murder, one of which your very freedom depends. You don't know much about your employer, Sage Asmodeus, save that he's the headmaster of the Sun Court and the leader of the Order of Sages, a mage of great skill and knowledge whose influence and power is rumored to rival that of the Emperor himself. About your mission and your targets you know even less, as Asmodeus was pretty vague on the details. A group of outlaw sages that needs to be dealt with in discretion, one sage, Aridius, and a few of his accomplices, accused of treachery and treason, a promise of redemption and freedom. You've concerned yourself with the latter far more than the former, if you can accomplish this task set out for you by the Grand Sage, you will have a chance at a new beginning. As impossible as it seems, you will have to at least give it a try. After all, what do you stand to lose? Alright, so this is the map. Um, this is the entire dungeon of the first level here. We move um, to explore. Okay, we just found 13 gold. And it explores the, uh, the dungeon as we go. When we backtrack, there is a percentage chance... To run into a an ambush so we have to be careful of that um so i'm going to try to explore it as well as i can okay nature's wrath an event you make your way through a thicket of tropical vegetation focused on the treacherous ground below you when you hit your head on something hard just above your field of vision the loud hollow thud of the impact is momentarily replaced with an even louder buzzing sound you know you're in trouble without even looking up. A swarm of enraged wasps emerges from the hollow branch you've just smacked your head into and turns their fury, fury towards your unwitting assailant. So we don't have, like, the ability to hide in the bushes. 50% um, chance to, if we bring it on, like, to fight the wasps, or 45% chance to run for it. I think I'm going to run for it. Even though it's the lesser chance, try to maybe make it to safety. And we failed. You run as fast as the overgrown thicket will allow, stumbling every step of the way and eventually catching your foot on a protruding root. You land on the ground and look around in panic, but the wasps are nowhere to be seen. Your foot, however, is in pretty bad shape and it will take some time before it fully heals. Evasion halved, minus two morale. Okay, down here is the morale. This is HP. These are your supplies. This is XP. As you see, it'll all react. Um, moving one step on the grid, uh, we'll use one supply and also heal you if need be. So let's come down here. I'm trying to like carefully explore. Do you want to leave the dungeon? Not yet. 
So, um, let's see how we can do this. We come down here. Wait a minute. Come here. And if we go up. No, wait, we have to go like this. Oh, no, we have to aim for that. Right, okay, so let's just explore then and see how it goes. Not much in this dungeon as when the first time I went through. I don't know why that is. Okay, we're up against an outlaw and a poacher. Damage resistance. Some enemies are resistant to a certain type of damage. Armor, arm, reduces physical damage from physical uh, default attacks and combat skills. While spell resistance, S res, reduces spell damage. Armor and spell resistance can be reduced below zero with spells and skills, resulting in extra damage. Minus one arm translates to one extra damage. Now we're not going to see... Mm. My cigarette keeps going out. We're not going to see the, tu the tutorial we had. Uh, or I had when I first came through here. Off screen, just to kind of test the game out a little bit. For some reason, we didn't get the tutorial back. But, um, you know, this is combat. If we click on, click on them... Uh, usually, okay, we have to defeat the enemy to add its entry to the bestiary. We can check its bestiary stats once we fight it. Uh, we can use items, skills, defend, retreat, and we have two actions, these two action points. Uh, let me go ahead and do a Dragon's Breath. Remember, we can use that twice per combat um, on the poacher. This is a little log over here, so we did five apiece, and I still have an action that has three cooldowns, so I will go ahead and attack... Um, poacher. Five damage. Wow, that did a lot of damage. Nine damage I did on it. Uh, the poacher hits me for eight. I'm gonna go ahead and retaliate. Four damage and dead poacher. Outlaw uses defend. Uh, we can use dragon's breath again. Do seven and then we can attack for four. Outlaw hits me for two. And we kill the outlaw. Bada bing, bada boom. We get 11 gold, 20 XP. No, these are items we already have. No uh, loot, I guess. So let's continue. But yeah, this dungeon was more populated the first time I came through. So I guess, it, you know, it's all procedurally generated and such. So we're going to backtrack at least one tile. Um, I guess that's it for the Mystic Grove. 25 gold reward, 35 XP. We come back. Um, now there was a tutorial again that said something, but I mean, nothing much has changed. We just continue again. Back in with our 49 gold. There's nothing we can really buy. Oh, we have to buy supplies. We barely have enough to buy supplies. At the, uh, the Salty Rat. Um, 25 for 15 gold. I don't think it'll just give me six. It's buying 25 at a time. I have nine out of 10 morale, so I'm fine with that. Okay. So let's, oh, collect wages. Okay, let's do that. Your hard earned wages, courtesy of the Imperial Governor of Farhaven, rest safely in your pocket. 25 more gold. Um, character hasn't changed much. We got a little bit of XP. So let's go back in and uh, try it out again. Enter dungeon level 2. Okay, we've made it to level 2. Which I've never been to. Okay. Let's go. We have a combat. An aether bug. That's cool. And a giant bug. I uh, definitely want to kill them with fire. And attack the, probably the Aether Bug. Three damage, three damage. Okay, Aether. I think we have a quest to kill these Aether Bugs. Aether Bug uses Aether Discharge for three damage. Bug hits me for four. Hits me for two. Oh, nice, six. Okay, we got a Blood Moss Extract, 9 gold, 20 XP. This is a Tier 2 Consumable. Restores 1 morale, plus 15% mental resistance. Mm. 
Already potent psychedelic properties of the blood moss can be further increased if the plant is prepared prior to ingestion in just the right way. The complicated process of cooking the blood moss extract is said to have originated from the Muata, whose priestesses practiced it daily in order to supply the hunters and warriors with a handy remedy for long treks across the fearsome jungle. It was not long before the substance was discovered by a merchant passing through a friendly Muata village, whose inhabitants were more than willing to barter away the excess of the stuff for a few bottles of imperial brandy. Pretty cool. So we get that. Let's go. Another combat. Straw effigy and a Fey Magus. Okay, we have a quest to kill Fey's too. Probably, yep, yeah, it has some resistance. The straw effigy doesn't. But, um... Straw effigy missed me. Fey Magus attacks for two damage. Two damage and three damage. So far the Magus hasn't cast on me and we'll keep it that way. 12 gold, 22 XP and a roasted meat. Tier 2 consumable restores 40 HP and plus 20 supplies. A finely roasted meat of some unidentifiable jungle critter. Just slightly overdone. Tasty. 12 gold and 22 XP. So... We should probably go ahead. Uh, we have 37. Let's not use the roasted meat just yet. Save it a bit. Another combat. Okay. We can always use it in combat if we need, so. It's Dragon's Breath. Those two, and then... To look right here. Four, four, and three. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, okay. Let's use a dragon's breath right here. And then let's go ahead and use the roasted meat. Have a little bite of roasted meat in the battle. Now, items are in a three turn cooldown. So let's kill that bug. I think the sooner we get... Oh, we use the the two turns of uh, Dragon's Breath. Wow. We don't have much in the way of like... What is up with this bug? Let's check its stats. That's pretty cool. An oversized tropical bug notable for the vivid green carapace covering the length of its body and a sturdy piece of natural armor. Yeah, it's pretty hard to crack right now. We're just doing one damage. Um, did it do some kind of special ability? Because we can't crack this thing. It must be a level 2 or something. Hmm. There's 2 damage. It's just rocking us. Did my... We're doing 2 to 4 damage still. Alright, there it goes, but... Dang. 12 gold, 30 XP. We got a rock egg. Consumable tier 2 food. Restores 50 HP plus 25 supplies. A huge egg of a rock. The apex predator that stalks both land and sky of the isles. Whoever was brave or crazy enough to steal it from the nest of the giant bird of prey must be in a lot of trouble now. Well, it was probably the uh, giant bugs. We're low on HP again, but we're high on supplies, so I'm going to use a health potion, I think. Um, well, we can actually save it till we're even lower. I don't know if we're going to make it through this whole dungeon, though. Two a poacher and an outlaw. Okay, well, Dragon's Breath works good here. Unless they really crit me. I don't fear them. Okay, a six. Oh, I'm poisoned? Oh, he did a venomous shot on me. Okay, let's go ahead and use the health potion. And then, uh... Dragon's Breath for eight. Wonder if poison lasts outside of combat. Oh, one second, guys. Okay, we got eight XP, 20 gold, or eight gold, 20 XP, and a long sword, son. Wow. Go ahead and check that bad boy out. 
slashing weapon though. Tier 1, 2 to 4 damage, 15% wound, wound chance. The first defining characteristic of a longsword is the blade length, with most longswords featuring a 33 to 43 inch blade. This relatively long blade length offers a unique combination of strength and agility. A person wielding a longsword can easily engage foes while also maintaining a high level of defense. It is this versatility that makes the longsword a preferred weapon of choice among many military professional organizations, the Imperial Knights being amongst the former. Cool. We'll take it. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and check our character, which is right here. Um, our dagger does add 3% crit and crit damage, but I might go ahead and equip that. And maybe in the offhand equip the dagger? I guess you can't. At least not readily right now. We'll try the longsword a little bit. I do like the crit damage, though. Two straw effigies. What are these things? 13% crit. Recovery. Heals itself for a small amount of health each turn. It's a passive. Whoops. Not long after they made contact with the first Imperial settlers that founded Farhaven, local Fae started fashioning human-shaped dolls from straw and dried leather, infusing them with magic in order to mimic the form and behavior of humans. In peaceful times, they would occasionally use these effigies to entertain their newfound neighbors, or even to guide and protect children lost in the Mystic Grove. Well, that's pretty cool. But now they're pretty evil. <sighs> Let's go ahead and slice and dice them up. Should have hit this one. Yeah, I could be more efficient with my dragon's breath for sure. Oh, seven with a long sword. Boom, ten, son. Twenty XP, seven gold, and a chip topaz. Enchantment material, tier one. Valuable ingredient. Or it's valuable and it's an ingredient. Topaz is a stone of nobility, love, passion, and purpose. Because of its fiery energy, this sun-filled gemstone is certainly associated with high self-esteem and good fortune. Cool. We're getting closer to that level up. Why did I do that? Pretty weird dungeon layout so far. A bunch of combat, no events. I don't want to leave just yet. Yeah, a bunch of combat. Two Aether Bugs, that's cool. And, uh, slice you. Hmm, Aether Discharge. Aether Discharge. Only did three damage there. There we go. Yeah, I'm digging this longsword. 20 XP, 9 gold, and an Adept's Oak Staff, an Arcane Weapon, Tier 1. 1 to 3 damage, plus 3 spell power, plus 1 damage versus Arcane. A staff is a magic user's tool of trade. It can be made out of various materials and inscribed with different Arcane runes, attuning it to one of six known realms of magic. If it comes to that, a staff can even be used as a melee weapon, though not a very effective one. That's interesting, because... I like the plus three spell power, but I don't understand what that would mean. Is my spell going to do just even more damage? Plus one damage versus arcane? I'm going to put the staff on. <clears throat> um, 50 HP, 25 supplies. Yeah, that's our last heal healing item, so we have to get out of here alive. A Muata Totem. You stand before a tall wooden totem, the likes of which the Muata erect in and around their villages. Its surface is carved with intricate motifs of plants and animals, depicting the exotic nature of the isles in all its glory, but also some unknown abstract symbols. A small pile of ritual offerings at the totem's base suggests that it has a religious significance of sorts. We can look through the offerings, 60%. Draw a connection, we can't do that. Decipher the symbols, 50%. Um, I'm not going to look through the offerings. I'm going to decipher the symbols. Success! You focus on the carvings of abstract symbols that run along the totem's surface, connecting various natural motifs, motifs in an intricate flowing pattern that ebbs and flows through the wood itself. With a sudden spark of recognition, you realize that the pattern represents the flow of Aether, not unlike the runes which sages and other arcane practitioners use to describe magical spells. But instead of a single spell, the complex carving encompasses this whole area and taps into its natural connection with the arcane realms. 
The approach is like nothing you've ever seen in any of the Imperial schools of magic, but it's undoubtedly effective. Very much so. Nice, I think this is permanent. Plus one spell power, plus one spell resistance. Beautiful. Last one. It is a combat. Okay. A Fey Watcher. We haven't seen them yet. Anything else fill in on these guys? Not really. Okay, so let's try this enhanced spell power. Oh, it seemed a lot f more fiery just then. Plus it hit the Fey Watcher for quite a bit, and he's resistant to magic, I'm sure. Miss. Three Aether Bolt. Well, he's about to die here. Now watch, pay attention when we click this. Yeah, that lights up the screen, baby. That's effective magic right there. Alright, we cleared level 2, guys. 7 gold, 22 XP, and a ring of minor agility. Accessory, plus 1 agility, a jewel-encrusted ring infused with a minor agility enchantment. Nice, son. Pulling some jewelry out of here. I think I'm going to keep using this staff for a while. That's pretty sweet. Alright, let's come here. We didn't get ambushed. Let's leave. 25 gold, 35 XP. We leveled up, I think. We can collect our wages, 25 gold. Now let's check the character. No, we're at 244 out of 250. We're close to leveling up. The uh, Our agility reflects the ring. What's our spell power at? Five. Nice. I thought we got a point of spell resist from the staff we're using. No. Plus one damage versus arcane. Didn't we have something? No. Oh yeah, we got the plus one. Oh, that must have been just for the uh, just for the dungeon then. Plus one spell resist, plus one spell power. So the totem was just for the dungeon. I'm sure there's some permanent ones though. Okay, this is five to nine now, so it scales. It did get stronger as our spell power got stronger. So let's see. Um, let's go ahead and hit the smuggler's den and do some trading. Uh, that can be used to enchant something. Well, they have some new stuff too. Um, that's using currency. It would be interesting to have a shell with us in case we run into some Muata. We could barter with them. Uh, let's see what we want here. How much gold do we have? 173? Grapes restore 15 HP plus 7. Grog restores 1 morale. A bottle of cheap and popular drink preferred by the countless multitudes that either cannot afford or simply lack the taste for anything more refined. Silverfin, 30 HP, 15 supplies, it's tier 2. A breed of fish valued for its shimmering silvery scales and tasty meat. Much of the Far Haven fishing economy revolves around silverfin and its migratory patterns during the seasons. Chip Sapphire, Sapphire is a stone of wisdom and royalty, of prophecy and magic. Its blue color is forever associated with sacred things steeped in the history and lore of nearly every cult of the Thousand Temples. Iron Plate Armor, Mercenaries, Battle Axe, what does that do? 2 to 4, 15% cripple chance, plus 2 damage versus Muata. Um, could grab the padded gloves, I guess. Ooh, plus 2% crit, a pair of light padded gloves. I think I'll buy them. Buying prices are normal. Selling prices a little bit higher. Oh. Our inventory only has eight slots. Definitely, we're going to be selling some stuff here. Definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, let's put the padded gloves on. I think I'll keep the, uh, the weapon. What's our damage with this? I'm curious. Two to four, so. But soon we'll have an ability or a skill to use with it. We don't have the money for a skill right now. Uh, do I sell the, the longsword? I'm going to go ahead and sell the dagger, I think. Um, source 3 morale. 
50 HP, 25 supplies. Um, let's head to the Salty Rat, buy supplies. Oh, there's a bounty for Acquire One Rock Egg, 45 supplies, I guess? No, 45 gold, 15 XP, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take that. Okay, so did we get paid for that? Oh, we have a stash, too. I don't have to sell everything. I don't want to. Kill seven straw effigies. Five poachers. Are we picking these up right now? Because... Let's go back to the uh, smuggler's den. I mean, the uh, salty rat. How many of those have we completed? None? Well, we acquired the rock egg. Collect. Oh, from the journal you collect it. Level up. You've reached level 2, plus 3 health. Nice. 0 out of 7 for straw effigies? Oh, because we didn't take the quest till now. Okay. Fair enough. Um, let's see how many. if we can take any more bounties. We can take one more. Um, I think the one that I might want to use that charm, so I'll take the chipped ruby, I think. You can have six at a time. We have 109 gold. You can hit the stash, maybe put the... No, I'm going to keep that with me. I'm going to put the blood mod... Uh, no, I'm going to put the uh, liquid... Uh, keep those for now. Chip topaz in there, stash it. Now over here, we can check out the Black Anvil anyway. Okay, new tutorial. Blacksmith, use raw materials such as iron, moonstone, or sunstone ingots in order to increase your offensive and defensive stats. Different raw materials yield different bonuses and the upgrades cannot be reversed. Interesting. Upgrades, oh, there is enchantment. So I can enchant this long sword. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Let me go back to my stash real quick. Grab that. Are you saying I can enchant this longsword with it? Oh, it's it's a chip topaz. Oh, and you can you can choose stash right from the the menu. Ah, oh, darn. Um, select raw materials to upgrade your base stats. Kind of weird. Oh, the it takes gold. Apparently right now just takes 150 gold. If we sold this long sword, we'd have exactly enough for one upgrade. Huh. <clears throat> Alright, let's head back to the salty rat, stash the chip topaz. Um, then there's the grave concoctions. Crafting. Craft a new item by combining two ingredients from your inventory. Don't forget to check the recipe list for more information. That's not going to make any recipe list. Oh, wow. Nothing we can really make right now. I haven't even seen most of these items. Oh, is there a chip topaz there? Yep. Chip plus chip equals a full topaz. And then full one versus full one equals a flawless. Nice. Okay, good to know. Mother's Worth. Alright, then we've got the arena. I didn't even see this there. Compete in the arena once per day in order to gain gold and experience, but beware, enemies in the arena are usually tougher than those you encounter in dungeons. After a match, your health and other stats will be automatically restored to their prior state, regardless of the match result. Wow. Combatants, Wild Menagerie. Milestones, defeat different named peeps. Wow. Victories, defeats. Yeah, these look pretty tough, though. We have to kill all three. Health, 30. 3 to 5 damage. Yeah. What are leech bugs, anyway? 
a horrific insect that latches onto its unsuspecting target without mercy, leeching its life force in order to sustain itself. Over the years, more than a few lifeless, lifeless corpses have been found in the Mystic Grove, stone gray skin and shriveled organs indicating they have fallen victim to this devious parasite. Firebug does 4 to 7 flare, a burst of fire that deals magical damage. A, par a particularly nasty and aggressive bug inhabiting the Mystic Grove. It is yet unknown whether its ability to shoot fiery projectiles at its target is a product of magical affinity or a biochemical reaction. Sorry if I'm sounding a little stuffed up again, but that's how it goes. Low Harbor. Manage and upgrade your ship and hire crew members to gain various passive bonuses. Only one crew member can follow you around for now. More crew members as well as other ship management options will become available once you acquire a ship. So there's a ton to this game, guys. We have to complete all hands on deck to acquire a ship. Bunch of upgrades. Wow. This is wild. We can hire a ship crew, apparently. For someone to walk around with us. Outlaw Occultist, Orc Warlock, Barbarian Mercenary, Cleric of Oberith, Pirate Henchman, a Draven Fistmite. Oh, this is wild. Um, Jessus Chestel, Outlaw Occultist, Rank Novice, Essence Transfer, 10% chance to heal for the amount of inflicted damage on attack. All sorts of occultists can be found in the frontier, dabbling in their forbidden practices far from the watchful eyes of the Imperial Law. An occultist on your crew would occasionally bestow you with a dark blessing in combat. Estid Ram, Orc Warlock, Potent Spellcasting, plus 6% crit chance with spells. The orc approach to the arcane is generally considered crude and uncivilized in the academic circles, but their aptitude for combat magic cannot be disputed. An orc warlock on your crew will give you an edge when casting offensive spells. Demarian Rosekeep, Barbarian Mercenary. Knockout, 9% chance to stun the attacking enemy for one turn. To stun the attacking enemy, so that's a defensive skill. Tough northern barbarians often serve as mercenaries and muscles for hire on ships sailing the archipelago. A barbarian on your crew will sometimes stun enemies that approach you. Reuben, distant draft, cleric of Oberith. Healing touch, 10% chance to restore 5 HP on next turn. Clerics of Oberith are known for their healing abilities bestowed upon them by their deity from the arcane realm of order. A cleric on your crew will sometimes heal you in combat. And then lastly we have... Draven Fistmite, Pirate Henchman. I'm sure more unlock as more slots open up. Pirate Greed plus... Is that 40% gold from Dungeon Gold Tile? It's no secret that pirates love their gold. A pirate henchman on your crew will look out for any hidden gold caches. Occasionally, he might even share some of his findings. So there's definitely some, some pragmatic choices here. And there's some fun choices. Uh, a little bit of both. I kind of want to add 6% crit chance with spells. I'm going to have a... Oh, I don't have 250 gold, okay. Figured they would cost gold, but... Let's see. Um, did I want to upgrade this? Requires level 3, okay. And I didn't want anything from the smuggler's den. Maybe some grapes. We'll buy some grapes. Check out our character. Uh, we've leveled up, so... What have we leveled up exactly? We don't do anything on level up? No, I guess not. Wait. Well, that's our portrait. Um... Huh. That's interesting that we don't level up. I mean, we leveled up, but we don't really uh, change much, at least on level two. Future levels, we'll probably be putting points into stats and stuff. Yeah, nothing really to do here. 
All right, so let's see how long we've been playing. 35 minutes. Um, grave concoctions. Oh wait, how can I make a, a healing potion? Oh, it's not grapes. <laughs> okay, we can't really do much with grapes. Got it. All right. Uh, Battle Academy. We don't have enough for the next tier of this, which is 200 gold. Thunder Strike. We don't have anything for skills. 202 gold. And then upgrades are supposed to be 10% cheaper. Let's see. I guess we're done here then. We, we got our little upgrade. And it's off to the next dungeon. We have enough supplies. Let's go. So we head back to the Mystic Grove. Dungeon level 3 now. Um, let's go. So... Combat right away with two giant bugs. Let's hit them with our fiery. But look at that damage. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Now we're gonna have weak melee. That's just gonna be part of it. <laughs> but these giant bugs are hard to kill anyway. But we're gonna have strong dragon's breath. Oh, six damage. Okay, 7 gold, 20 XP. Huh. Dungeons so far have been strangely emptier than my first run through. Found 13 gold. That first dungeon off camera, it was populated with these crazy events. I guess that's just the, the luck of the draw. I don't know, it's strange though. Like, look how empty this one is. Hostile elementals are drawn to the Warden's sigil on your chest. Uh, well, fire should help. Yeah, they, they're strangely empty. I don't know if I've got a bad seed or something, but... It just seems awfully strange. There was like four events on level one of the dungeon when I first came through here testing the game out. Four gold, ten XP. And now there's like very empty. Trader's journal. In the remnants of an abandoned campsite, you find a discarded journal entry. It reads as follows: Journal of Sage Iridius of the Sun Court, Southern Isles Expedition, 1245, one e first era. Entry one. One. Sage Iridius of the Sun Court set these words to parchment in order to record events regarding my upcoming expedition to the archipelago of Southern Isles. On the behest of my old mentor and the headmaster of my order, Grand Sage Asmodeus. Just the other day, Asmodeus approached me with an interesting proposition. He claims to have made a pivotal discovery that could forever change the way we perceive and utilize magic. I must admit my skepticism at first, Asmodeus having a sort of reputation for bold claims, but the nebulous story he told me that evening in the Sun Court's central library has piqued my interest for several reasons and has been keeping me awake at nights ever since. For one, it is closely related with one of my fields of research, which is, I presume, why the headmaster came to me in the first place. The field itself is not very popular among my colleague sages these days, but has been a hobby of mine ever since my adept days. I speak, of course, of Muata, the infamous natives of the Isles, and their unusual approach to magic, which baffles scholars of the arcane across the Empire. But the hour grows late, and I shall not bore the reader with fine academic details of why that is at this point. More on that subject later. Reading the Journal of the Renegade Sage grants you valuable insight into your quest. 25 XP. Cool, that's different. Combat with Outlaws and Poachers. Dragon's Breath. Yeah, I'm getting pretty stuffed up now. It's just a nighttime thing that I go through. Oh, I did two damage just in time. Oh, there's five. So it does, you know, a little bit of damage. 20 XP, 9 gold, and Bohemica. 15% retreat chance. And an ingredient. Even though it still eludes alchemists how exactly a Bohemica mushroom affects the body, 
One of its proven side effects includes partial invisibility. Wow. Which way was the way out? Retreat? Oh no, I have to go way back up there? Oh, I made a mistake there. No ambushes? Yep, we got ambushed. Ooh, and a poacher and a thug. Ah, I don't know. Two damage and the thug hits for three. Poacher missed me. Well, they both missed. Okay, we got this. Boom. Five gold, 11 XP. And we leave the dungeon. 25 gold, 35 XP. Iron shortage, blacksmith inaccessible. Quality of imported iron has declined recently, making for brittle arms that break easily. The black anvil is forced to close its door for the time being collect our wages and I'm gonna save here guys and say thank you for joining me yeah there's a lot going on in this game and it's very cool in my opinion I hope you guys dig it too look we have a lot of stuff to check out next time shield of reflection Ooh. <laughs> excuse me so lots and lots of love poured into this game by monomyth um, I also someday want to get to his other game grim quest which is much like this one but uh, with some differences as well a very cool dungeon crawler nonetheless so I uh, hope you're digging it. hope you'll join me for more. I do want to play more of this. Tomorrow I start playing the, cave, the lore, um, Caves of Lore a bit more. But I hope uh, to continue this one as well. So I hope you guys will join me. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you guys. Much love, peace, and joy. And stay tuned. Uh, much more to come. And there is an event slot. That's what that slot is for events. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.